Hi, my name is Tammy Cheever. I'm with the Soils Hotline at the National Soil Survey Center, and this is a brief overview of the Web Soil Survey application. I would like to go over the main home page. Um, you can see here it start, has a big green start Web Soil Survey button. On the left-hand side, we have Browse by Subject Items. From here, you can simply, you can quickly go to the soils homepage. You can look at archived soil surveys. You can go to this official series descriptions, um, the geospatial data gateway. These are subject matters that we thought um, customers of Web Soil Survey would be interested in using, so we listed them here for um, quick navigation. If we go over to the top, back up to the top, there's a contact us link if you need help or have questions. This will get you the contact information for every state soil scientist in the country. And we'll go back to the, the main page. On the right-hand side, we have a number of sections. The first at the top is the I want to section. This talks about, first you can click Start WSS in this list, or you can click the green Start button. We also show you the system requirements for running Web Soil Survey. We'll take a quick, quick look at those. Um, it tells you what browsers are supported and what screen size you should be using. It gives a recommended display resolution. It talks about JavaScript being required, cookies, and pop-up blockers. We'll talk more about pop-up blockers later on in this video. So if you want to know how to hyperlink from other documents to Web Soil Survey, we've got a page that will show you that. There's a number of ways to do it. You can list your area of interest, um, soil survey area, and there's an example here. And you can use coordinates. So if you know your coordinates, you can use a URL similar to this to go directly to that AOI. Another important thing under the I want to section is know the Sergo data structure. Web Soil Survey uses Sergo data, and so you'll want to know about the uh, metadata availability is on this page. talks about how to use the data. So that's important to know. The next section we have is announcements and events. So whenever we have a release of Web Soil Survey, we'll put new features and things that have been fixed in that version. And then we also give a soil survey release history. So you can see when the various um, updates were done. And then there's a link for each feature, um, new features for each version. The next section, if we pull down further, is I want help with. And if you want to know basic instructions for getting started with using Web Soil Survey, click on this first link, and it will guide you step by step of how to go into Web Soil Survey, set an area of interest, and some other um, cool features that you may not know if you don't read through the document. We have uh, known problems and workarounds. We'll go to look at one of those. And here again, we talk about pop-up blockers. Um, we'll have the question or the problem on the left-hand side, and then we'll give you an explanation or a workaround on the right-hand side. We also have a frequently asked questions section. So a common question we have is, when was Web Soil Survey first released? You can see on the right-hand side, the answer is August 16, 2005. We also have questions. Uh, people want to know how to cite Web Soil Survey as a source of data, and we give you an example here of what to use. I'll go back to the middle of the home page, and we have a little information about um, Web Soil Survey was produced by the National Cooperative Soil Survey. It's operated and maintained by USDA and RCS. And you may notice here that sometimes 
we, all, we often say on-site investigation is needed in such cases as soil quality assessment and certain conservation and engineering applications. Um, this is the main web soil survey main homepage, but you could also go directly to the application by using um, this URL. So once you bookmark um, this page, you can skip the information on the main homepage and go right directly to the application. So once we start the web soil survey, I'll talk briefly about the parts of this application. You have a main menu bar here at the top that starts with a contact us link and ends with the help link. So on the web soil survey menu bar, we have uh, one important link I consider is this contact us. When you click on it, it will give you three different ways to get help with web soil survey. The first is to email the soils hotline. And we can help with application problems, um, how to use Web Soil Survey. And we can also direct you, if you have questions about the data, we can help you get to the right person. There's also the link to the appropriate state office. This takes you and gives you the link of every state soil scientist in the country. Um, you'll get their, their name, phone number, email address. And this bottom link will take you to the local office for the NRCS Conservation Service. Now, we'll cover it later more in depth, but if you set your area of interest first and then click on Contact Us, this will actually have the contact information for the, lot, the office nearest your area of interest. Uh, the next menu bar, oh, and to close this menu, just click the X to close it. The next thing I want to show you is the archived soil surveys. Now, these archived soil surveys are um, soil manuscripts that have been archived and put up on a website. They aren't actually held in Web Soil Survey, but we, you can get to them from here. So you just click Archive Soil Surveys and pick your state. Well, let's take a look. Let's open this document, and you can see we have um, the whole page here. And this document, what's, what's going to come from this document that doesn't come from Web Soil Survey is the general nature of the area um, for that survey area. A Web Soil Survey doesn't provide that. That's why having the old scan manuscripts comes in handy. So let's go back to Web Soil Survey. Um, we also have a soil survey status. We can get that soil survey, survey status in a PDF a JPEG, or actually in a shape file. The next option is glossary. And these are for terms that um, you may not be aware of and want a more explanation. Just pop into the glossary and, and look the term up. Next we have preferences. And in preferences, one thing to remember is this open links and PDFs and external windows. If you generate a report or a map and you go to printable version and it either says that you have a pop-up blocker or it just gives you a blank window or does nothing, that's a sign that you have pop-up blocking on. Um, the easiest thing to do to get around that is come into Preferences, uncheck the box, and click Save Preferences. For my purpose, I'll leave that checked for now. The other thing to be aware of is this Use Quick Maps. In Web Soil Survey version 3.3, .3, we implemented Quick Maps. And what that does is it makes Web Soil Survey work or run faster. But what it also does is if you're a person that comes down to the map, right clicks, and does Save Picture As, you'll get a blank white page and no, and no map. Just come to Quick Maps, turn it off, and then when you right click and Save Picture As, it will give you all the layers. So you'll see the aerial photography and the roads and all of that on your picture. Otherwise, when you're done with that, um, 
you'll want to come back and turn these quick maps on because it does make Web Source Survey run so much faster. The next thing I want to show you is this link. Now, if I had an area of interest set, um, this is a good thing to come in here, highlight the URL, do a control C to copy, and press control V to paste it into, say, an email. If you want to email to a, a client or email the source hotline and tell them that this, what, this is your area of interest that you're having problems with, or if you want to bookmark this. And you can save it so that the next time you open your browser, you click on the bookmark, it will go right back to Web Soil Survey with the area of interest set. It will be exactly the same each time. So that's a very useful um, menu item. Uh, the next item we have is, I'll close this, the next item we have is the logout. And while you can close by clicking the red X, it's a preferred method is to click close out because that will end your session and it's just a cleaner way to get out of the system for our servers. We also have help, uh, help menu. And what you want to know here is that you need to click and drag down on the sash bar so that you can see frequently asked questions, known problems, tips, and shortcuts. So if you came directly to the application and you skipped over the main home page that has that information, you can still click Help and then get to that same, same information. And again, you'll click the X to close. 